Um, I enjoy designing puzzles. I've got a few articles puzzle, uh, published in Game and Puzzle Design as well. Um, today I'm going to be talking about uh, a puzzle that came out in 2008 that I really enjoyed um, and what I've done with it since. Um, the name of that puzzle is Untouchable 11. Uh, it was designed by Peter Jabarchuk back in 2008 and it was released online um, as a playable app. Uh, the game had 11 pieces, which were the 11 unfoldings of a cube, and the goal was to pack them in a rectangle um, such that none of the pieces touched one another. Uh, there were three challenges, an easy, medium, and hard. Um, I was able to solve the easy and medium puzzles by hand when it came out. However, I struggled with the hard puzzle for a couple of weeks before I gave up and decided to write a program to solve it for me. Um, I'm not the best programmer, um, so I let the program go and I continued to think about the problem while it was running. Um, while it was running, I realized there was a, a mapping that was possible, um, and I could map it to a conventional packing puzzle. Um, there's two ways to think about it. You can pack the nodes, um, and basically each of the uh, uh, unfoldings of a cube then becomes a 14-cell polynomial, and you add one to each of the boards, so the 12x12 12 12 board becomes a 13x13 13 13 board, so that's my, my inclusion of 13 in the talk. Um, another way to think about it is you're basically adding a half-cell buffer uh, around each of the, the pieces such that that prohibits them from touching. Um, I didn't want to give away the, the solution to the hard puzzle, so this is the program I was using at the time to, to find solutions. Um, once I realized that I could map it to a conventional puzzle, um, and that's the solution to the medium puzzle using Gerard's pol polynomial solver. Um, this program would allow the uh, solution for the, the 12 piece, I mean the 12 by 12 board to be solved in uh, about 90 minutes. My program took uh, about two months to complete, so it basically all it did was verify the solutions that this program had found after it was completed. Um, I immediately started uh, looking for new boards and new challenges. Um, I found several others that to include. There's the solution counts for the original ones. The 12 by 12 board has seven solutions. The medium board has 48,000, I mean 482,482 solutions. And the easy board has over 65 million solutions. Um, I found uh, one, two, about four other, five other boards, um, all with uh, fewer solutions than the medium board. Um, I made a puzzle that I used as my exchange gift last year at IPP. Um, that's it pictured on the lower left. And um, it allowed you to play that puzzle on all the possible boards that I found solutions for. And the puzzle also won us the Excellence Awards for 2015 from uh, Game Puzzles, uh, the website. And that's a picture of the award that it won. Um, so the next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to widen the search, and I wanted to find a puzzle that had a unique solution. So to widen the search, I started looking at all 35 of the uh, hexaminos. Um, and I didn't really want to include the entire set, because there's an awful lot when you start looking for, for puzzles. Um, I immediately noticed that uh, pieces 22 and 23 mapped to the same piece. So if they were in a set, you could always swap those two so they would never be in a, in a unique solution. So they were thrown out. The same property is true for pieces 24 and 25. Um, and then uh, actually 22 through 35 um, are all ten tighter packed than the 11 unfoldings of a cube. They could be fitted in a, a 3 by 3 board or a 4 by 2 board, um, which were none of the 11 unfoldings of the cube would fit there. So I figured those were easier to pack. So I excluded all of those. Um, and then pieces 28 through 35 um, all actually have even fewer than 14 nodes. So in some sense, they're smaller with this type of game. So again, I felt they were easier. Um, and then pieces 26 uh, would never be in a unique solution either because it could always be rotated by 180 degrees because that small notch on the right there would never be filled, so you could always rotate it. Um, so we started searching uh, for Board puzzles with unique solutions on square boards. Um, N is the number of pieces I was willing to include in the puzzle. Um, and then we looked at board sizes all the way up to 14 by 14. Um, the first thing that popped out was looking at the original 12 by 12 board with 11 pieces. I found there were seven sets with unique solutions. Um, interestingly enough, there's also seven sets of 12 pieces with unique solutions on that same board. Um, those pieces are actually quite a bit easier to solve because there's much fewer restraints. Um, and then the other thing that jumped down at me, and the one that I actually ended up turning into hazmat cargo, was the nine-piece puzzle on the 11 by 11 board. Uh, if you note of the subset of the hexaminos that I looked at, there were no sets that didn't have any solutions, and there was only one out of 293,000 uh, plus that had a single solution. All the other sets had multiple solutions. 
Um, so these are the list of the board pieces on the various boards that have uh, nice puzzles. Um, the 11 by 11 board, I ended up turning into the puzzle I called Hazmat Cargo. I made the board look like a barge. I made the playing pieces themselves look like uh, hazardous drums that were in various bundles. And your goal was to pack them on the barge such that none of the pieces could touch each other. Otherwise, you'd deal with cross-contamination of your, your hazardous chemicals. So I entered that in the IPP competition last year. Um, so there's still two open hypotheses that I like to solve. Um, basically, I'm wanting to state that these nine pieces are the only set of the hexaminos that have a unique solution on this board. And I'm also wanting to state that all other um, subsets of nine have multiple solutions. Um, what I've done is I've only looked at a subset of the hexaminos. Um, if you looked at all 35, there's actually over 70 million possible combinations. Um, and I've only searched 0.42% of that space. Um, I still think both of those hypotheses are likely true because I think all the other pieces that I've left out um, are much easier to place than the others, so they should lead to many solutions. Um, but uh, I haven't actually proven that yet. Um, I wrote an article about this uh, topic of this paper for Game and Puzzle Design. You'll all get a copy of that as your uh, exchange gift from me. And I also wanted to give you uh, some links. Um, I've got one puzzle that's been mass produced. It's available on, uh, from Calvin's Puzzles. And uh, I also make puzzle rings. And uh, those are some links where you can get some of my puzzles. And you're free to contact me. I've got my email up there as well. Thank you.